Hi everybody, I am Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and sometimes gouache and today we are doing our dancing ghost squash project. Ah! We have Michael here working the cameras. Well, hello. And I am so excited about this project because when I was thinking about the theme, the witching hour and kind of like spooky season coming up, this is exactly what was in my mind's eye of like dark forests and um, you know, like spirits coming out and just kind of fun, funky. Was it in your mind's eye or your third eye? <laughs> Both. Uh, I don't know. I don't know a lot of witchy stuff. <laughs> Me neither. Right. Okay, so we're going to be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we're going to put in our background. Our second step is we are going to put in our trees. Our third step is we are going to put in our foreground shrubbery and trees. Our fourth step, should I say four twice? No. no. Our fourth step are our dancing ghosts. And our fifth step are the fireflies. There is no outline with this project, but that is totally okay because I'm gonna walk you through it all. And it's meant to be a little bit like loose and um, gestural and maybe a bit sketchy. Ethereal. Ethereal. I'm really in that haunty vibe right now. Me too, I just wanna go. <laughs> 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 okay, so the supplies that I have here are I have my four go-to brushes, round two, round six, round 12, and one inch wash. I have a paper towel, and then I have my gouache. So we are using Holbein gouache, which is a great brand for gouache. I have permanent white, ivory black, brilliant orange, yellow ochre, and turquoise blue. Now, if you are unfamiliar with gouache, it's essentially like if acrylic and watercolor had a baby. It is water soluble, but it's opaque, which means you can layer on top of it. It's like the best of both worlds and I really love it. If you want more background information, we have an intro to gouache video on our YouTube channel. It goes through all of the details of tips, tricks, how it's the same and different from watercolor and acrylic. And it just gives you great background information. So I have that on my butcher tray palette. I have my water out and let's do our oath and then get into it. Sounds great. Okay, if you can raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you very much. You know, one of my favorite things is I've taught a couple workshops in person and we do the oath before we do workshops. And every single time we say the ding whenever we do the thumbs up because we don't have the bell. I have two things to say. One, if you notice that Sarah paused a little bit before the oath, it is because she was really waiting for me to raise my right hand, which is funny. I force it. Because you guys can't see me, but she really <laughs> waits for me to do it. And also, I remember in the olden days um, when we did the ding chime, we didn't have a real bell. We'd add it in and we'd put a sparkle on your tooth. Yeah. Do you remember those old videos? Yes. <laughs> That's right. Well, and it's funny because back in the day where uh, I used to film with in our office space where people were actually working on their computers, um, that was probably a few years ago. But I would, if they were in the room, I would make them say the oath, even if they weren't painting. I'd be like, Desiree, <laughs> raise your hand. She's like on a phone call with a. <laughs> 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 okay. So we are going to start by putting in. Um, the top half of our painting and then the bottom half. Now the top third, no, top two thirds is going to be a mixture of yellow, ochre, and black. And then the bottom third is going to be a mixture of that same um, with the addition of turquoise. And what I'm trying to create here is this feeling of forest that keeps on going forever. So there's not gonna be a very clear horizon line with edge and things like this. We want this to feel like it's shrouded. Like we can't totally see what's going on, but I feel like there would be like shaded trees for miles and miles and miles, okay? Sarah Cray brings all the edge we need. That's, that's right. <laughs> Pretty edgy. <laughs> okay, so I have yellow ochre, I have black. I'm gonna take my one inch wash and I'm just going to loosely put it in. Now I always, I don't, okay, maybe always is aggressive, but I really love adding a vignette to my paintings. And a vignette is actually a photography term where you kind of add a darker value along the edges. So sometimes I'll go back in. It's caused by a suboptimal lens design. 
Really? In case you're curious. Yeah, you're kind of seeing that like the light comes through a lens, through all the glass parts. Mm -hmm. And a vignette is caused by like, you know, the the reflections from the inside of the lens and the glass curvature. And, you know, they try to correct for it. And a really expensive lens does correct for it. But you just end up adding it back in. I just put it back in. (laughs) (laughs) So you can see I added a little bit more black at the top. And then as I'm working my way down the middle, I'm adding a tiny bit of water because I want the center to be a slightly lighter value. You're really moving fast. Is that on purpose? It is on purpose because we want you to move fast. We want this to be loose. I don't want you guys to overthink this. We just want to kind of go for it. Now, I will say that I am trying to make sure that my brush strokes are horizontal instead of vertical, and that's going to lend the look of the landscape feel a little bit better, like a little bit more than if I were to do vertical. Interesting. You know what I mean? Okay, and then let's just do like... So you're telling me if you did this all vertical strokes on purpose, mm-hmm. it would feel off? Mm-hmm. Your brain would just know, even mm-hmm. though you don't see the real world in paintings, your brain would know that that painting is wrong. I mean, like, I think it would show up, it depends on what you're painting, and I think it would show up stronger in other paintings, just depending on what the subject is. But um, I have noticed that overall, whenever you're painting anything, you want the brush strokes to be an indicator of the overall shape and form. So landscape would be horizontal. Um, when you're doing a pumpkin, it would be a rounded curve, that kind of thing. Okay, now if you were not able to get a lighter value in the middle, you can always go back and lift. So you could take your one inch brush and just have water on it and just kind of lift out. And then notice that I'm hitting, when I'm, whenever I'm done, I dry my brush on my paper towel. So it gets rid of that excess water and paint. And then you just blend it out. Okay? Perfect. Next thing we are going to do is we are going to add turquoise to that. Make sure and do the bottom third. So I have yellow ochre. I have turquoise. And that's going to make like this really great green. Let's add a little bit of black here. And remember, we're not really doing an outline. So your... Um, where these things kind of end up in terms of on your paper, um, like your green and your yellow and your black. It's going to be different than mine, and that is okay. And then I'm just going to kind of blend along the sides up a little bit more. I still want the center to have a lighter value, but I kind of want it to be confusing. Where is this horizon line? I don't want it to be such a strong edge. I want it to diffuse. And then, because why not, let's do a little bit darker green and add that vignette. It's funny how color has information just in itself. Like I see these colors and I think of like the walls of an old haunted house. Yeah. You know, it could be anything, but just has that haunted vibe. Well, it was funny because I said in the beginning that I really had this, I from the beginning, I wanted to do a dark forest with ghosts in it. And I probably did this project about four different times, four different ways, using different colored backgrounds and different sized ghosts and all this stuff. And um, this is the one that I landed on because I loved the color of the ochre and the green and the black, you know? Okay. So we are going to let that be for a minute. And now what we're going to do is we are going to move on to step two and we're going to put in our trees. Now, if you're just like trees, there's no outline. How am I going to do these trees? Well, take a breath. It's totally fine because really what we're doing is just painting trunks. Trunks are just two parallel lines that start to slowly come together along the top. That's it. That's all we're doing for our trunks. So there's two things I want you to keep in mind when you're painting these trunks. One is the ones that are closest to us are going to be thicker. And um, the ones that are farther away, they're going to get thinner and move up in the landscape. So if we look at our reference photo here, 
you can see my faraway tree, see how the base starts like, you know, almost the middle where these foreground or more closer trees start about of a third. And that's how we're communicating that this is kind of a flat, like it keeps going. If we were to have all of our tree trunks, no matter their size, stop at the same line, then it would actually flatten our painting. It would just seem like all of the trees are in a straight line. If you wanna make it feel like the trees keep on going, you need to layer it, and then you need to adjust where they start. So it's kind of like we're peeking through the, these kind of shrubbery things on the side and seeing this thing that we shouldn't see. You know what I mean? Ghosts. Ghosts. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to mix some browns. And you can mix different browns with brilliant orange and black. And depending on your paint ratios between those two, those are gonna give you different browns. If you have more of the orange, it's going to be like kind of like a burnt sienna color here. And then this is probably even mixture. And then this one here, let's do more black. You can also introduce some yellow ochre in there too. So just like that, we have three different browns going on. Okay. Now I'm gonna start putting in my trees. And um, you, if you wanna start, it doesn't really matter. Like um, you can start thin and work your way forward. You can start your way forward and work your way back. I'm doing this all in one step. So I'm just gonna kinda see what my painting needs as I add it. The biggest thing I wanna remember is I wanna make sure I leave room for my shrubbery here. So I have some plants coming up along these corners and some dark tree trunks on this side. So I wanna make sure that I am leaving space so then they're not overlapping with each other and also that I can see my um, spirits or ghosts coming in here. It's not the worst deal. It's not the worst thing in the world if they overlap because that's true to what we would see for nature anyway. So I'm gonna take my brown I'm just gonna start right here. I'm gonna start with this thicker one. So if you have a 12, you can just, and then kind of lift your brush a little bit as you work your way up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the easiest tree you will ever paint. <laughs> and then after you do that, remember trees are wonky, so you can go ahead and add a little funky edge. Just like that. And then the other thing that we can do to really communicate the depth of these trees is the ones that are closest to us are going to be darker. So not only do we make our trees closer to us bigger, the ones that are farther away are smaller and a little bit lighter, okay? Because of the ethereal mist. <laughs> exactly. And so um, this is kind of, and I'm just gonna acknowledge this, this is scary. It's scary because we don't have an outline and we're like, is this okay? Am I messing this up? Well, you'll only know if you just go for it. You know what I mean? Also, you could just tell people that your painting was taken at a different time and the ghosts were in a different part of the forest. Yeah. So the trees are a little different. Now, I want you to give you guys a little bit of warning here, which is you are used to watering down your watercolor in order to make a lighter value. So in your brain, you might wanna water down this paint to do the smaller trees. However, with gouache, if you have too much brush, if you have too much water on your brush and you paint, then you actually lift the background up. So you wanna make sure you have a healthy amount of paint on your brush when you go to paint these trees or else you will be lifting up all of your background. Does that make sense? Yes. Do not lighten with water, lighten with other paints. Exactly. Now, even, and just so you guys know, your painting is going to kind of lighten as it dries. And even now, as I'm looking, I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder if I should do one more swoop along the top here. But I'm not sure yet, so I'm just gonna keep on going. And um, you can always like add those things. Call me crazy, but these remind me of Harry Potter wands. Oh, totally. Yeah. Okay, I see that. Just a bunch of them. 
and our brain is going to want to evenly space trees. So try and Sorry, I did not finish that sentence. Try and put them in a way where they're not evenly spaced all the way throughout. And you can have some go a little bit wonky. If you want to do like a hint of a branch, you can. We recently went um, camping in the Ozarks, which is on the border of Arkansas and Missouri and very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we're driving with all of our little family and our eight-year-old sees a log cabin. She goes, what is that wood thing? And <laughs> our 11-year-old looks around the forest and is like, Luna, those are trees. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> Okay, so um, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of ground my trees a little bit. So I, I was gonna use my one inch wash, but I just think it's too thick. So I'm gonna switch back to my round 12. I'm gonna rinse the brown off and I'm gonna get some of this green, maybe mix it a little bit with the brown. And I'm just gonna do kind of these like- Oh, cool. Just kind of like where the brown meets the ground. Just some horizontal brush strokes just to ground them so they feel like they're actually coming out of the earth. There's a technical term for those. What? Swoopies. <laughs> We're going to do some swoopies. Yep. Yeah. And you can even just do like a dry brush kind of thing with like a little bit of paint. We're just kind of messing it up. Honestly. Those are called scratchies. <laughs> You're, you're really coming in clutch with these technical Thank terms. You. I have a <laughs> master's in fine scratchy art. Swoopies and scratchies. Perfect. Now part of me is wondering, do I add another layer of funkiness? Listen, you've brought it up twice. That means yes. That means yes. Okay, so let's do some yellow ochre. Now, honestly, I didn't do this in my, the original painting, so I don't know how this is going to affect my trees. So I might have to do like, I don't know, a couple more swoops for my trees. I don't know. We're just going to see. But I want it to feel um, darker than how it's feeling right now. I feel, so I'm going to just add more paint. I feel like this is a good technique. I use it for when I want to buy something. I don't buy it immediately. But if I think about it again later, I probably will. Mm, I see what it's you're a good saying. one for painting, maybe, if you're like, should I do this? And then you forget about it, and it comes back up. It's a good indicator. Yeah. That maybe you should. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's one of those things where it's just like, like for now, I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen when all these trees are, like, rubbing into each other. or Maybe I'm just making it worse. I don't know. But, like, this is all experimentation. And let's say it doesn't work out. Like, let's say I do this, and I'm like, oh, I actually don't love how that turned out. That is just information that you can take into the next painting that you do. And the reason why I'm doing vertical brush strokes right now is I'm trying to not mess up my trees. If I do horizontal brush strokes, then I might take that brown and smear it across the thing, and I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm just gonna kind of like work my way in between. Now, I need to acknowledge that if you are painting this with me and you feel good about you know, the feeling of your painting and the color and, and all of that kind of stuff, then do not feel like you have to do this step. I kind of really like the extra texture you're adding in. Me too. I think it is actually adding to the mystery of the wood. Yes. Like, are there more trees back yeah, there? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's the, the ghosts of trees also. Yeah, exactly. And then I think I'm going to do a few trees like back here too, because I've been avoiding this area for the little like spirits, but like this is obviously too bare. So let's add some of that in. And I'm going to try and go with a color that's more similar to the background. So it's the barely the hint of a tree. Can you 
You lean your little head back a little bit. Thank you. So you see how it's just like, are these trees back here? I mean, it's like barely there. And I'm using black and yellow ochre for this because I want it to blend into my background. And if ever you put in a tree and you're like, actually, I want that one to stand out more, then add brown to it. You can layer in this. And this is why gouache is so wonderful. I'm realizing after filming all of these spooky box items with you that I, uh, I associate a lot of spooky with the bayou. Because I was really? like, okay, where is this picture? I'm like, bayou for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny maybe we should go there and tackle my fear maybe we should i hear they have great food i have heard that that's how i get sarah to go anywhere i talk it's about true. how good the food is <laughs> he's like you want to go to the store there's cupcakes i'm like yes okay, okay. <laughs> and depending like i'm just gonna do this because we're just gonna see like why not we're just gonna see what happens i'm gonna take some brilliant orange and what happens if I just do like a, Whoa. you know, like a little orange highlight on some of these? A little va-va-voom. I would keep it more towards the foreground trees, though, and not do it too much on the background. And that will give us even more. You got to make that sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I have noticed that. My brush was too wet when I was grounding some of my background trees. You see how it lifted a mm -hmm. little bit? So I just grabbed more green and I could just go right in. I'm gonna put some stuff in. Okay, we're gonna leave that. We're just gonna leave that how it is and we'll just see what it needs, but I feel pretty good about it. And I think we can move on to our or like our foreground shrubbery, which is like a silhouette almost. And so I'm just gonna use black. If you wanna add a little bit of like blue and yellow in there to give it like a hint of green, you can, but we want it to be the darkest value. That's the most important thing. And um, you can have the tree off the paper. I did it on either side, so it kind of frames it. But I actually think it would be stronger if I do a tree trunk kind of coming in right here. What do you think? I think that sounds great. Okay. I'm just going to make sure it's dry before I do that. Okay. Black tree. I'm going to have it just coming in here. This is going to be our thickest one. Cool. And remember, it can be crooked. I'm someone who I feel likes to chronically overwork things. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been doing this thing when we're filming lately where I look at your paintings and go, okay, this could be done at this point and look very beautiful. This could be done at this point. Like yesterday, well, I guess it's not yesterday to you viewers, mm -hmm. but in the spider web episode, I mentioned that it kind of looks like a Monet painting right now. I was thinking oh. this could be done and, and framed just like that. I think this could be framed and be cool just like this, too. Yeah, yeah. It kind of has a, a natural, like, leads your eye down the tree path. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's kind of what I was hoping um, would happen with this forest. It's just like, maybe you're looking at this and you're like, I don't really want to paint dancing ghosts in my painting. I just want to paint, like, a darker forest. Well, then you can just do the list, last little shrubbery details here and call it a day. If you don't want to paint dancing ghosts, do you even like fall? <laughs> okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my round six and kind of along the bottom here, I'm just going to start doing these like overlapping dashes to kind of start to create the illusion of shrubbery. And I'm going to have it go oh, like a third of the way in and a third of the way in over here. Be messy with this at first. Make your marks overlap and have them be different. So sometimes something that you can do to help you with that is you kind of like turn your brush as you paint. So then you're not making the same exact marks over and over again. And this is just the first layer. We're gonna go in with a round two. 
like so. And I'm gonna to start to put in like little thin branches, like the, the little bushes are kind of coming out and then leaves off of those. So to do this, I'm just gonna take my round two and you can start, and remember like, um, I kind of want it to feel full. So I'm gonna have these kind of like leaves, branches kind of going all out. And sometimes it's like nice to have just like a creepy, like thick branch poking out that's kind of bare. And change up the size of your marks. You can do some big ones, you can do some small ones. And you might say, what shape am I making? Am I making a leaf shape? Am I making a dot? We're doing it, all of it. Because if you think about the shape of a leaf, our brain thinks of this because it's like flat, but then what happens if it's on its side? What happens if it's facing towards us or away from us? That's gonna create a bunch of different shapes. So we wanna account for all of those different like silhouettes that we could possibly see. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I just, I almost got offended for those little bushes when you said a creepy thick branch. I'm like, he's not trying to be creepy. <laughs> he's just growing. He's just doing his thing. Jeez, man. Touche. I guess I, just because branches are. I feel like the Lorax, I'm like defending the trees. <laughs> like he's not creepy. He's cute. Okay, and there's one thing that just happened that I need to call attention to, which is this branch decided to stop right at the base of this tree. And whenever you have two different objects that line up on a single line like that, it always throws your eye. It's gonna create like this funky area. So what you have to do is you either need to make sure your branch stops before the trees or overlaps on top of the trees. So then it's not confusing of like what's going on in this plane. So then I'm just going to make this bigger which means I have to make other sections bigger. It kind of creates this confusion of what's on top or what's in front, you know? Mm -hmm. Depth confusion. Yeah, depth confusion. So I'm just going to... Is that better? It's beautiful. That feels better to me, but... Okay, now we have two things left. We have to add our ghosts and we have to add our fireflies. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to do our ghosts, but I'm gonna show you how you can do these silhouettes. I'm gonna use black, because I'm gonna do it on a scratch paper, piece of paper, but just know that we will be doing it in white. And I'm gonna be edgy and just hope that that does not ruin my painting. So I have a few different dancing ghost shapes going on here. Now one, you can just leave these out and that, that's not a big deal at all. Just put in the fireflies and you're done. I wanted to do a few different shapes or like movements to show you that there's different options. So um, I was thinking about essentially a sheet over a body form. So you have to think about the parts of the body that are sticking out and the overall shape of them so it doesn't feel flat. So for a ghost that's just kind of going and not really holding out any of their... Limbs. Limbs, thank you. I'm like, what are these called? Flappers. <laughs> um, we would wanna do like a head, so that's rounded. And I'm gonna use my round two for this. Maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll try it big first, but we're gonna paint these tiny. So I'm gonna do it big first so you can see, and then we'll um, go from there. So I do like a, just a half circle. And then I think about movement. And so if it's moving, then it's gonna be trailing behind, like the blanket is gonna be trailing behind. So it's not gonna go straight down. You can have it go straight down, but it, that's gonna feel pretty static. Like it's just standing there. I want movement. So I'm gonna do a half circle. And then I'm gonna lift up my brush. I kind of want it to feel sketchy. And I'm gonna think about how this like fabric is trailing behind, like so. 
And then I kind of like the like torn sheet bottom look. So I'm doing kind of a jagged edge like so. And that probably had too many sketchy lines in it, but this is like the gist. Okay. Now for the other ones, I thought about, okay, I have a head. And then I kind of wanted the arms to be out forward. So like that, like just an arm coming up. And then I think about the fabric kind of draping off the arms. And then another hint of a hand here. So like, these are not full figures and these are not totally detailed out, but that is okay. That's what we want because these are ethereal ghosts. Like, are we getting the hint of them? I wanted them to be kind of see-through and not solid. So that's why I'm using white just to give that sense of like a, um, a see-through mist or something like that. Ectoplasm. Is that it? That's what ghosts are made out of. Ectoplasm. Yeah. Okay, and then the other one, um, I have them with their arms out. Now, this one was kind of tricky because I had to think about, like, how it's facing. Um, so if I have the head here, then I have some arms kind of coming out this way. And then we do the, the fabric from there. And you could say, <laughs> this kind of looks like a bird. And you could say, like, oh, I don't really like that shape, but I like this shape or I like that shape. Maybe you like the one where it's just straight down. That's totally okay. Um, just kind of play with it. And then like, you can decide how detailed, like what, what happens if you put a hint of a nose? I like that. I like the movement in them. It makes it look like they're really hurrying to get to a party or something. They're just yeah. three buddies. Yeah. They're like, we got to hurry. We got to get to the party. Their arms are out. It's witching hour. We gotta go. Oh, I, I overslept. <laughs> I actually thought it'd be hilarious if you added like party hats to them or something like that, <laughs> like polka dot. Hats. Yeah. So, okay, so that's them big. And now we're gonna try that same thing small. And remember, the less you do, the better it is. Gotcha. So you're gonna want to overwork these. And I'm trying, and I'm asking you to keep your brush strokes to a minimum. So if we're gonna do a smaller one, have, they can see that, okay. So there's the head, and then the fabric's kind of just trailing behind. Okay, I've got it. You know what would be cute? What? Trick or treat attire on them. Like have them carrying a little bucket <laughs> oh my and like gosh. have one be like a little pirate. That's it. <laughs> That's the one. Have a, have a hook hand as a pirate. <laughs> And then we can take, so that's the one that's kind of just like going forward. And you can have all three of them do the same thing. Like, I just wanted to give you options on forms. So there's that one. And then this one, we do the head. I usually always start with the head. It kind of is a great place for me to understand the next move. And then I'm going to do an arm coming out. And then the fabric kind of coming off from that. Another arm. That one looks like he's hailing a taxi. <laughs> I feel like this one's saying, wait up. And so, like, again, maybe this one's kind of doing, woo. Wait, what is he doing? I got to. Woo. <laughs> People might think they watch these for the education. They really do it for the subtle dance moves. They do it for the dancing. Yeah. I'm a very skilled dancer. I get it. I'm about as skilled with dancing as I am with my accents. So. Oh, my gosh, you guys. <laughs> we went through accents on our little uh, trip to the Ozarks. It was so good. Okay. So that's enough practice. We're just going to go for it. Now, remember, the beautiful thing about this is this is gouache. The worst thing that can happen is you don't like it. And you can actually just, like, do another layer, smooth it out, and then, like, start over. So it's not a big deal. So I'm going to get some fresh white. Wait, did that paper damage your painting at all? No. Sweet. I know. Being edgy pays off. I've always said it. Okay, so the size of these, I don't want these bigger 
I'm going to keep these within like probably around an inch, maybe an inch and a half. So decide how big your ghosts are before you go to put them in. I have done a few where the ghosts were much bigger, but I, I, I didn't like that as much because I wanted it to feel like us, the viewer, was peeking through these and they're far away. The ghosts are far away. So I'm going to make sure that their bodies are kind of in this mid ground that I left a little bit lighter value. I don't want them here. I want them here. And that's going to show that they're further away within the forest. I'm like, I swear I just put white on my palette. So water down your white just a little bit. And it's kind of scary, but we can do hard things and we're just gonna go for it. And this is what I tell myself even when I'm alone and not teaching. And I'm just gonna start with the head and the little fabric that kind of follows behind it. Oh, you, you chose there? Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, good choice. Oh, okay. I'm being the art friend. <laughs> yeah. The reoccurring character. The art friend. Yeah. Oh, you chose there? Good job, but did you draw it yourself? <laughs> and then sometimes I like to um, rinse my brush so there's barely any white and then just kind of smear some of the white so then it has a little bit more of a like feel of see-through mist. I'm telling you, it's ectoplasm. Ectoplasm. It has a feel of ectoplasm. <laughs> okay, next one I'm going to put right here. I don't know why I know that. It's a weird ghost fact. Just rattling around back there. It's a ghost telling you. That's, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's all coming full circle. They're like, please tell them what we're made of. <laughs> okay. So we have the head here, and then we're going to have the arms kind of outstretched. And the fabric kind of floating off behind it. And then again, I'm going to take a damp brush and just kind of smear some of this. Don't smear the whole thing. It's just chunks, chunks that we're smearing. Okay. This is a great example where I think lack of detail is more detailed. I don't know yes. how else to describe it. Yes, I know exactly what you're saying. Also, it's okay to paint directly on top of these trees. We don't have to work in between the trees because it's basically showing that these ghosts are in front of these trees kind of thing, which is why we're putting them like right here in the center. Um, and also these ghosts are see-through. So it's okay if you see some of the tree behind it. That's what we want. Um, so I'm going to do one last guy through the head. Let's do his arm going down. So it gives it more of a dancing thing. It's a dancing queen. <laughs> or maybe it's like twirling and it's little. Maybe it's one ghost moving real fast. <laughs> And again, I'm just kind of smearing some of it. So it's nice to have some of that bright white. And it's also nice to have the kind of like smeared softer white. And then you can do like a few trailing. If you want to do like some trailing little dots kind of coming off it, that can make it feel as if it's smoke itself and not just a full thing of fabric. So I love when like community members paint things different. You know, like I mentioned, the... Halloween outfits would be cute. Yeah. I also would love this same exact, the same three ghosts in the same positions in a club with a disco ball. <laughs> like lights and lasers going. Totally. Okay. So those are our ghosts. You can do as much or as little as you want. You can skip this part totally. I just think it's such a fun little element. And also, and this is the most amazing thing. You can add little ghosts into any landscape painting we have ever done within Let's Make Art, and it all of a sudden is Halloween art. <laughs> it's just so fun. There's actually a trend right now going on like TikTok and um, Instagram and stuff where people thrift paintings 
and paint it like fall or just put like ghosts oh, I've seen in that. there. Yeah, Isn't yeah, that yeah. fun? Like old oil paintings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we could do the same thing with our projects. What a fun idea. Okay, so the very last step, step is I'm gonna add fireflies. Now to make it feel like these fireflies are glowing, I'm gonna do the fireflies in two steps. The first one is I'm gonna take yellow ochre and water it down. So it creates a very soft see-through yellow. And then I'm going to start adding it. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because we don't want it to be so watery that it lifts up paint. So if you just need to make sure you have more paint so it doesn't do that, that's what we need. But essentially, and I'll show you here, what we're going for is two different values. We want the softer yellow ochre as the glow, and then we'll use white or pure yellow ochre as the little dot in the middle to show that that's where the firefly is. So the soft yellow ochre just gives us the hint of um, light, like the glow itself. I got to say it. Every time I see the word ochre, I want to say ocher. Ocher? Yeah, isn't that like O-C-H-R-E? Am I mm. misremembering that? I don't yes. know. It's a weird yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it's spelled. Weird word. Yellow ocher. Listen, I am not the person to ask on how to pronounce things. I'll never forget one of my first tutorials I pronounced Azure wrong. And somebody watching was just like, you can't even pronounce this. And I'm like, oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I've, thinking, I've been thinking lately about compiling all the mean comments and just like having a fun time where we read them. Because like some people are funny, you know? <laughs> like a mean tweets. Yeah, mean tweets. <laughs> I remember one where someone was like, you don't even hold a paintbrush, right? Yeah, it's I remember like, that one It's too. a paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Okay, so I'm playing with the different sizes of these yellow dots that I'm putting in here. Of course, the ones along the foreground right here are gonna be the biggest, but the ones in the background, I'm kind of doing smaller and a little bit bigger ones. So just kind of play with it. And also please know that like, you can still add more trees if you want to like, um, this is this is at a stage where you can keep messing with it if you want to. You could say that you could add more trees and no one would say boo. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you how to add a firefly if you wanna do it in this dark shrubbery. I'm gonna do a yellow dot here. We're gonna let that dry. And now I'm going to take either white or pure yellow ochre. Let's try white, let's just see. So you see how that gives it the Whoa. feeling of a glow with yes. something that's actually lit up inside? Makes the air feel misty as well. Yeah. Um, fun fact for those of you who don't live in a firefly area, because we moved to one and I had never seen them before. They're actually beetles. Yep. They're little beetles. They're not flies. So of course, change the size of the center depending on the size of the. That, that one needs one. Okay. And doesn't that just give this added sense of like mystical? Love it. I know I finished the spirits and I was gonna call it good when I was making this project. And then I'm like, no, it needs another feeling of magic. Fireflies. The next step after this is a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> just hiding in the forest. Okay, now the very last thing on this bush where there is a firefly over it, I'm actually going to take some of this brilliant orange and around it make the bush lit up Love it. using orange. Love it. Because the fireflies will light up whatever it's around. So it's just giving that extra hint of warmth. like that it's a light inside the bush wow that makes a huge difference isn't that cute yes <laughs> just a little boop okay let's do the reveal because it's really satisfying but for those painting at home try and keep your paper taped down to your surface to your surface <laughs> for <laughs> for at least like i try and do a day because your paper will just dry more flat now i know like it's okay but because I'm removing this tape right now and it's still wet from what I just painted, it's gonna dry 
curvy. Wonky. Wonky. Bam. Incredible. Isn't that fun? Yes. I really hope that you guys take this idea and run with it. I mean, you can add little dancing ghosts to any painting. You can do, I mean, last year we did a creepy castle. You can add little ghosts coming from there. Like there's so many options and I really hope that you let yourself have fun with it and really play with this kind of like mystical, magical idea and think about what do I associate with? I mean, maybe you don't think about fireflies as magical. You know what I mean? Like what is it that you can add? Maybe it's mist. Maybe it's a full moon in the corner. Maybe it's even darker and richer colors. Feel free to listen to that creative voice that is inside of you and follow it because you are an artist. It might not feel like it, but if you are painting, you're a painter. If you cook, you're a cook. You know what I mean? It's, it's just something as simple as that. So um, thank you so much for painting with me. I had a blast. Uh, uh, if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Michael, thank you for being here. Anytime. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.